In this module, we will uh, start exploring uh, the complex version of the trigonometric function. Now, uh, we have seen trigonometric functions in our school and college education of mathematics. Okay. Now, uh, these trigonometric functions play, uh, as we have seen in the real analysis case, so they play a very important role and of course, very basic uh, role in discussing the geometry of objects, in, in discussing the physics uh, of uh, uh, motion of different objects and of course, in the algebraic properties of different functions. Now, uh, these are very important functions and uh, naturally the question arises whether we can define them in the complex analysis case or not. Uh, in this module, we will try to focus on this question and of course, fortunately, the answer is yes, there is a way for defining cosine z where z is a complex number and uh, sine z where z is a complex number and other trigonometric functions. Uh, we will try to uh, see uh, how we can define them and then of course, we will try to see that uh, which, which of the properties from real analysis holds in the case of complex analysis. So, the whole discussion is going to be focused on these uh, uh, areas, how do we define them and what properties holds in the case of complex case and of course, uh, uh, the comparison and the derivatives and other properties. Okay. Now, let us begin with our uh, discussion. Now, um, when we defined exponential functions and other functions, uh, we agreed on one thing uh, that uh, uh, there is a strategy for defining the complex versions of the functions from real analysis. And the strategy is basically very simple. We use uh, the series expansion of that function from real analysis and just replace x, the real variable, with the complex number z. Okay? Now, we are going to use the same strategy in the case of trigonometric functions as well. Now, uh, let us begin uh, with our uh, definition. Now, we know that sin x is basically defined in the following way. Now, this is uh, the series expansion that we get from real analysis. And similarly, we can write down cosine x in the following way. This is the series expansion that we get from real analysis. And according to our strategy, we are going to define sin z in the following way, where we just replace x with z. So, that is how we define sin z. Okay? And of, of course, over here, you can see that x is replaced with z, where z is any complex number. And uh, similarly, we can define cosine z in the following way. So, of course, in this case, again, uh, x is replaced with z, where z is a complex number. Now, uh, on the same lines, we can define uh, tan x, uh, cosecant x, cotangent x and secant x uh, by using the same ratios. So, tan z is going to be equal to sin z over cosine z cotangent z is going to be equal to cosine z over sin z and uh, secant z is going to be equal to 1 over cosine z and cosecant z is going to be equal to 1 over sin z. And since uh, we have defined sine and cosine, so all of these trigonometric functions can also be defined. Now, what happens when uh, z is restricted to real numbers? Of course, uh, uh, we can see from the definition of sine z, if we restrict z to uh, real number x, then it is exactly the same as we discussed in real analysis that it becomes sin x. So, uh, our first uh, kind of check is passed. Uh, so, this definition is okay and uh, according to our first check. So, uh, our first check is if we restrict the complex numbers to the real numbers, is it the same as we discussed in the real analysis? And uh, the first check says that it holds and uh, this is passed. Okay. And uh, now, we want to further explore uh, the properties of trigonometric function. Uh, uh, the properties that we used in our calculations and explored in the real analysis case, uh, they want to be checked in this uh, complex analysis case. Okay. Now, uh, the first property is very simple to prove. Sine of minus z is going to be equal to minus sine z due to very, very simple reason because if in this expression, if you replace uh, z with minus z, then over here, uh, minus 1 is to power 1 will be common from all of the terms and what do we get? Minus sine z. Okay? So, due to many, uh, very simple reason and once again, due to uh, again a very simple reason, cosine of minus z is equal to cosine z because when we replace this z with minus z, then over here you can see that there are only even powers of z. So, this minus 1 will be absorbed in that even power. So, that is why cosine of minus z is going to be equal to cosine z. 
now uh, this identity requires some uh, steps but i'm going to leave this as an exercise so there are uh, some uh, very simple steps to follow and we can easily check that this property uh, and this identity also holds in the complex case and it is a very useful identity which we will be using in our further calculation okay now uh, we want to define trigonometric function in another way so uh, that was one definition which was the series definition of the trigonometric function now we want to define them in another way and for that definition we are going to use the following fact and of course we are going to first prove this fact and then we will use it to find other uh, definitions of a trigonometric function and of course now this way of defining a uh, trigonometric function uh, gives us uh, further properties which are easy to prove and uh, uh, this will help us in uh, for example comparing the real and complex analysis case now uh, let's have a look at the proof e raised to power iota z is equal to cosine z plus iota sin z now uh, there is one important thing please don't confuse uh, this uh, uh, fact with the euler identity uh, with the Euler formula, so the Euler formula is e raised to power iota theta, where theta is a real number. Over here, z is not a real number; z is any complex number, and though uh, this is going to be equal to cosine z plus iota sine, okay, theta. Sorry, in this case, this is this theta. So uh, please don't confuse uh, this fact with the Euler formula. So the Euler formula is kind of uh, a restriction of uh, this fact. Uh, now the proof of this is uh, uh, relatively simple and in fact it is on the same lines as uh, uh, the proof of the Euler's formula okay now uh, over, over here uh, e raised to power iota z can be defined in the following way by just replacing uh, iota z in the definition of e raised to power z so we are just using the series definition of the exponential function now we can write down this series uh, in two parts uh, the even terms are over here the odd terms are over here so for example 0 2 4 terms will be here and um, when we uh, vary the value of n from 0 to infinity then we will get 1 3 5 and up to so on so basically we have divided this uh, uh, series into even and odd term okay now uh, of course we can now start observing uh, the appearance of cosine and sine and of course this these are the even powers so there is a uh, there is a guess that this might end up to be cosine and there is a uh, there are even uh, odd powers so there is a kind of guess that uh, this expression might end up to a uh, sine of z now let's see if uh, our intuition is correct in this case or not now moving on so we can try to uh, separate these iotas in the following way so iota raised to power 2n and our iota multiplied by iota raised to power 2n now uh, this iota can be uh, taken common to be outside over here and uh, iota raised to power 2n is nothing but uh, minus 1 raised to power uh, basically n Okay, so there is n over here okay now uh, of course we can now see that this is nothing but cosine z and plus iota and this is nothing but sine z okay so uh, hence we get the following expression okay so uh, that is the proof of uh, this fact now using this fact uh, we can uh, define sine z in another way okay so e raised to power z is going to be equal to cosine z plus iota sine z and uh, using uh, this we can if we just replace iota z with minus iota z then we get the following expression cosine z minus iota sine z okay now uh, if we subtract these two uh, expressions then we get the following thing so sine z is going to be equal to 1 over 2 iota e raised to power iota z minus e raised to power minus iota z so that's another way of uh, defining uh, sine z where z is a complex number and on the same lines we can of course uh, define cosine z uh, using e raised to power iota z and e raised to power minus iota z so this implies that cosine z is going to be equal to half e raised to power iota z plus e raised to power minus iota z okay now uh, based on uh, these definition we can define other trigonometric functions so for example we can define tan z we can define cotangent z cosecant z and secant z so because tan z is just sine over cosine so and we have defined sine and cosine so if we just divide them we get the definition of tan z and other trigonometric functions can be defined so so far we have two ways of defining these uh, complex trigonometric functions now what are the consequences of this new way 
uh, uh, of defining the trigonometric function. Now let's have a uh, look at the consequences. So the first consequence is this very useful formula uh, that will help us in expanding uh, sine z if z is equal to x plus iota y. So basically this separates uh, the real and imaginary parts of the complex number. So that's where it is useful. Okay, if z is equal to x plus iota y, then in this formula you can say that this uh, real part is separated from this imaginary part and over, over here in the second term as well the real part x is separated from its imaginary term so basically they are separated in this expression and uh, in the further calculations we will see that this formula will help us in our calculation okay now the proof uh, is based on our second definition of sin z we know that this is equal to uh, 1 over 2 iota e raised to power iota z minus e raised to power minus iota z Okay, now uh, e raised to power iota z becomes e raised to power iota x plus iota y and uh, similarly e raised to power minus iota z becomes e raised to power minus iota x plus iota y. Okay, so very simple and uh, moving on if we just multiply iota with x plus iota y what do we get? So we get iota x and uh, iota into iota becomes minus 1 so it is minus y plus iota x and uh, the second expression so e raised to power minus iota into x plus iota y becomes uh, so e raised to power minus iota x of course and uh, e raised to power plus y okay because minus uh, iota into iota is plus one okay so we get the following expression okay now uh, using Euler's formula okay so this is basically x is a real number now so we can say that it is Euler formula okay so e raised to power minus y and uh, this becomes cosine x plus iota sine x and uh, this expression becomes uh, cosine uh, x minus iota sine x because over here it is minus x uh, minus iota x okay so um, moving on so what do we get so over here uh, this is basically uh, sine x and uh, of course if we uh, separate the terms the, then we get sine x and e raised to power y plus e raised to power minus y over 2 plus iota cosine x e raised to power y minus e raised to power minus y over now, uh, uh, now these expressions, so they are kind of familiar to us from the real analysis. Now, let's see uh, what are uh, these expressions. Okay, of course, uh, these are basically uh, cosine hyperbolic y and sine hyperbolic y. So basically, uh, this is uh, the end of the proof of this expression. Okay. Now, moving on uh, to the next fact, which can be, of course, uh, proved uh, using uh, the same. Uh, definition of uh, cosine z uh, of course the second definition that we have done in this uh, module so using that definition and uh, following the same steps as we did for the sine z we can easily prove this uh, formula okay now uh, let's have a look at the consequences of these formulas now using uh, these formulas we can calculate for example prove uh, that sine of z plus 2 pi is equal to sine of z now once again uh, in real analysis we used it again and again that sin x is a periodic function with period 2 pi and very fortunately uh, this is also true in the complex analysis case in other words sin of z plus 2 pi is equal to sin of z and similarly cosine z plus 2 pi is equal to cosine of z and similarly other properties okay now uh, let's see how to prove uh, these properties let's uh, try to focus on the first property and the rest of the properties are uh, left as an exercise okay so how to prove this thing now uh, z if z is equal to x plus iota y then this can be written in the following way so sine of x plus iota y plus 2 pi and if we uh, gather the real and imaginary parts so we get a sine of x plus 2 pi plus iota y okay now using uh, this formula that we just proved uh, we can expand this expression in the following way now sine of x now in this case our x is x plus 2 pi okay and cosine hyperbolic y and in this case y is basically the same as y plus iota cosine of x plus 2 pi plus sine hyperbolic y okay so that's what we get okay now uh, once again uh, sine of x plus 2 pi is basically sine of x and cosine of hyperbolic y remains the same and similarly cosine of x plus 2 pi is the same as cosine of x and sine of hyperbolic y remains the same okay now uh, we can easily uh, observe that this is the same as sine of x plus iota y 
which is basically sin of z. So this implies that we have proved that in the complex case, in the complex trigonometric sine function case, sine of z plus 2 pi is equal to sine of z. So uh, sine in the complex analysis also has period 2 pi. And similarly, the rest of the uh, uh, facts uh, can be proved as well. This is uh, the end of uh, part 1 of our discussion on the trigonometric functions. So far, uh, we have defined uh, the trigonometric function in the complex analysis case and uh, we explored uh, some of the properties. Uh, in fact, we defined them in two different ways and uh, both ways have their own importance and uh, we will see that uh, in some cases we will be using one definition and in some cases we will be using the second definition. It depends on the situation. In our further discussions, we will further explore uh, the properties of these uh, complex trigonometric functions.